Hello and welcome to Lightroom to Flickr setup. I hope this little video will help you with this process. So publishing services is something we can talk about in great depth, but right now I just want to make sure that you know how to get your pictures on Flickr. Flickr is a sharing source that we use for many of the classes. And it's a very useful place to share images both with the class, to research images beyond the class, and to store images. So I've decided I want to set up a Flickr Publish Services. So I click on the Setup button and I get a, a this whole list. I can make multiple publishers to Flickr. So I'm going to do one um, to any student. And I need to authorize this. So I'm just going to work my way down this list. And that should take me to Flickr. And I'm going to choose Annie Student's ID. And I'm going to sign in for Andy Student. And notice my computer remembers this because I'm on a private computer. Um, you do need to know your password if you were if you don't have it remembered. So then you can read this all carefully. It's letting you know that you're authorizing some kind of access. Obviously, I'm authorizing my Lightroom to access my Flickr, so that's not a problem. But it's always good to read the fine print. So when I come back here, I say done. And you'll see that I'm authorized as any student. And I have a place here to remove the authorization. Here I have a choice on how the Flickr name will be set. It can be set for the title in the metadata or to be set for the file name. And it's letting you know that if there's not a title, it will use the file name. And when it updates, it will replace the existing title. And that's a choice you have. And you can go down the regular settings that we've seen in other exports. It will be JPEG. I always put things up at best quality. I don't have much use for low quality images. I could resize, and since my pictures are D810, I might choose to resize these, um, or I can leave them full size. I can sharpen for screen if I wish, or not sharpen at all. We'll talk about sharpening a little bit more in other areas. And I decide what metadata. I'm going to leave my location information on because one of the things I do is use GPS so that I can see where things are. Um, but I will remove person information in case there's any people noted so I can do that manually and consciously. I don't really believe in watermarking, and we can talk about that another time, but I won't watermark this time. And I'd get to choose my privacy. I'm going to make these private this time. I could make them public so everyone will see them, or I could do it for friends and family. My images are safe, and this is about um, family safe. And you get to choose if you did images that were of nudes, if you did images at the gay pride parade in the um, in the more risque section, you might choose to have it restricted. Um, and but generally, my images are safe, and that's what I, I will put say that I'm putting up here. They are reviewed periodically by Flickr. And it is a photo. Okay. So now I've created this publishing folder, basically. So I'm going to go up here to my attributes and look for three star pictures that I can share. Maybe not. Okay, so I'm going to drag, look at this picture first, and I'm going to look at the metadata and see that the file name is, um, it's an HDR that we made in class the other day, and I'm going to put the title, um, okay. and you'll see if I go over to the map that this picture, I think, has GPS, and so you can see that it's right here. And I actually can, if I went the right way,
see exactly where it is. And I can, that's one of the things I like about having GPS. And so I have the name of the city now, T-Y-R-O-L. So I'll go to library. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it to my Flickr stream. And then I'm going to take um, this one and I'm not going to do anything to the metadata, but I'm just going to drag it. And I'll take this one. I'm going to take these two, too, so we can see a range. So now we're going to go here. We have five pictures up that we've added. We have one that has a green tag. All of them have three stars. This one does not have a title. Let's see where it is. So those two are both in, in Prague. So I'm going to go here. And so you can see how it could be useful to do some of your work here in Lightroom. Then I'm going to come up to the keyword list, and this one has night photography. Um, I'm going to put macro on that. And I'm not going to put any keywords on that or that one. And this one has a, a one what keyword of wild geese, which is the book that it's from. OK, so now you'll see that right here it says new photos to publish. So I have these five photographs. They're in new photos to publish, and I'm going to publish them. I click Publish. And it tells me that it's updating the published co collections. If I go back to Flickr and sign in, I'm in as any student. I'm going to go to my photo stream. And remember, I set these for private. So I'm going to do view all, and then I'll have to wait for them to pop up. You'll see that in this, we do have the option that comments can be tracked inside Lightroom, if you wish. Um, so once these are published, you see now this one's been published. There's no comments yet. If we come here and refresh. Here is a photograph that I've put here from Lightroom directly. If I add a comment, And I come back to Lightroom and I, you can see that the comment shows up here. If someone else put a comment, it would also show up here. So I could actually track what was being said about the photographs in Flickr using a Lightroom. It does require that you're connected to the internet. And so The five photographs are up. If we go to each one, this one has the title I gave it. It has the keywords I gave it, but it also has um, some additional keywords. That are automatically applied by Flickr. This is in beta, as you can see.
So the GPS actually told it where it was. So it's very interesting. And the keywords they come up with sometimes are quite interesting. One more thing and why you might want to publish rather than put things on a desktop and then upload. So say that I come to this picture and I go to the develop module and I want, I'm continuing to work on this on an ongoing basis. So I'm feeling like it's a little bit dark, so I'm going to go a little bit lighter and I want um, a bit more saturation for this viewpoint. And I'm going to do a graduated filter to just slightly darken this corner so that our eyes go more to the tower. Very subtle changes. And probably the last thing I'm going to do is go to effects. And I'm going to give it just a little bit of vignetting. OK, so we have a, um, a change. It could be more dramatic, but we do have a change. And when I come here, I, you can see this is now a modified photograph to republish. So it is waiting for my direction to put it back up. So when I click Publish, it will then So there's one photo to update on Flickr. Replace if you want to replace existing photographs on the server. Skip if you want to skip uploading files already on the server. So I'm actually going, since I made corrections, since I made it better, I'm going to replace. And then when I go to Flickr and go back to my photo stream, We should see the picture is the updated version. I hope that was helpful. Um, it's a great way to keep things in organized and to work with them. Um, you, you can make multiple. So I could also come in here and go to Publishing Manager and create another Flickr for myself since and since I have two accounts or I could do one that was um, actually let me do this so it makes more sense Annie student public so this is where I would put images that I didn't want to be private so this one this one will be for private images and this one will be for public images the one thing about a publishing publishing service is once you set it up you, there's very few things you can change about it. And um, I hope, think that's it. So um, thank you for watching, and I hope this is helpful, and send me questions.